So our third speaker in the first panel is Doug McCaleb, who is Senior Advisor to the Secretary of Agriculture in the United States Department of Agriculture. And Doug has a long career of civil service at the USDA. He's currently and has been Senior Advisor to the Secretary, but has served in the White House and are a number of different um, positions that uh, address biotechnology and research and renewable energy. We're really pleased to have uh, Doug come and share some thoughts uh, clearly, the agriculture sector has been mentioned here in Colorado. The secretary was just here talking about uh, a threat from a virus, African swine fever, which Doug may say more about. So, uh, Doug, really uh, looking forward to your comments. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Rudolph. Really appreciate it. It has been a big week for us uh, working with CSU. Uh, I will make reference to the secretary's speech. He, he made a major announcement of investment uh, on biodefense, which has uh, some major implications. Um, in addition to that, uh, um, I uh, and others here at USDA, including the Secretary, uh, serve with the North American Agricultural Network, uh, which is uh, headquartered out of CSU SPUR, and uh, biodefense is part of that effort. So we have a, a big meeting coming up on Monday and really appreciate uh, CSU putting a spotlight and, and resources into these efforts. I, I think you know, biodefense is incredibly important, and as my fellow panelists have mentioned, uh, only becoming increasingly uh, more so. I'm going to put a spotlight on agriculture. I'll hit a few slides, but before I get into those, uh, just a couple notes. So agriculture represents a $1.1 trillion chunk of the U.S. economy. Um, that obviously represents a tremendous amount of jobs, a, a major uh, portion of the GDP. But beyond the jobs that it represents, uh, the food supply chain in America represents um, well-being, everyday uh, confidence and, and uh, safety of American families and, and compromises to uh, our food security uh, system and to the overall supply chain uh, represents an attack on, on uh, civil order and, and uh, the overall well-being of, of citizens. So that's something I think that is an important factor for us to, to recognize. Uh, we view the food system as a whole as being critical infrastructure. And as we look at biosecurity and cyber, uh, all of that really plays together. I think this was really evidenced this year uh, by several events that took place. Um, in Memorial Day, of course, we had one uh, ransomware attack on one meat processing company. Uh, and that, that attack on JBS uh, over Memorial Day weekend showed that just in one day with one attack, we had about 22% of uh, meat processing capacity in the country uh, gr uh, ground to a halt. Um, and some may say, well, it's, you know, you can switch to a different thing on the menu. Well, I, I just want to share what the supply chain, uh, what those types of disruptions mean. So I'm going to cite a couple of facts for you here. Every day in America, and I'm, I'll use pork as an example, every day, including today, there are about 1 million hogs on the nation's highways uh, being transported uh, to and from growing facilities, to processing facilities, et cetera. Um, and that's pri primarily in 17 states, but it covers a lot of the nation. Every week, there are about 2.5 uh, million uh, swine that are processed. Um, so we are talking about if there is a disruption of plant shutdown, either because of uh, uh, grid issues or uh, direct attacks on, on the uh, processing facility itself. Uh, that's a major public health concern. You've, you've got animals out there. You've got animals that potentially they need to be depopulated, possibly uh, put into uh, a, a location that uh, clearly this is a, a bigger public safety issue than just looking at economic issues or what's available in a supermarket or a restaurant. So I think that's critical. More recently, over the last month, we saw attack on uh, 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 grain facilities in, in Iowa and in Minnesota. And uh, those disruptions, again, just uh, two cooperatives were attacked. Uh, that represented 62 grain elevators at a time when harvest is beginning. So you're talking about logistical shipping issues, uh, uh, traffic of barges up and down the Mississippi River. Um, you know, there are extensive implications that cyber and biodefense all have when you're talking about the food supply chain. So it's um, a really vital topic that, that CSU is, uh, is putting a highlight on. So we, we really appreciate that. Just, uh, I'll hit real quickly in the, these slides. I'm not going to go over all of them in detail. I think it, it um, uh, gives chan a chance for folks to just review them uh, when they look back at the um, 
at the, the replay on the, the, the video. Uh, but I'm going to cover uh, some presidential directives. I'm going to cover the biodefense strategy quickly and, and hit a few uh, pertinent topics. This slide shows the organization of USDA and just two points I want to drive home. We have 29 agencies, 100,000 employees, and we have over 4,500 uh, points of presence. So almost every county in the US has a USDA office and in some cases, multiple offices. So that's a lot of, uh, of uh, cyber out there. That's a lot of uh, systems to harden. Uh, and you've got everything from confidential business information of companies uh, located in those uh, offices. Uh, you've got uh, genome sequencing, you've got results of research. Uh, you know, I, could, I could go on and on, but that's a, a big uh, plate to cover in a lot of uh, areas that need to be thought about and protected. Um, our goals, and I won't go into each and every bullet, but emphasize the very last one there, that our mission is to provide Americans access to a safe, nutritious, and above all, a secure food supply. And that relates to biodefense and cyber, no doubt. 61% um, of all human diseases are zoonotic. So if we're talking about compromises to maybe ag research or looking at what might be happening in the private sector on, uh, on animal research, uh, you know, there clearly is a, a direct connection to human health and overall national security. Uh, zoonotic diseases encompass more than 70% of all emerging diseases. And I'll talk about COVID a little bit later, but you know, clearly animals can be a source of variants. Uh, they can be a vector. Uh, in many cases, animals might be the first area where uh, diseases are introduced into, into the US. Uh, high path uh, avian influenza in 2015 cost the US government $800 million uh, and, and led to major uh, disruptions to trade um, and same has happened with foot and mouth disease in the UK as well. So uh, we have a you know, presidential directive on, on Homeland Security focuses on this. Uh, USDA is a central part of that and uh, food systems are a major uh, part of looking at defense against terrorist attacks, uh, disasters and other emergencies, which clearly cyber intertwines with, uh, with all of the above there. Uh, we have eight agencies that are, that are contributors toward the work on, on this uh, presidential directive. Uh, Biosurveillance is a major part of it. Uh, there are a lot of uh, interagency coordination that happen on these uh, food and animal threats. Uh, a lot of intelligence support is involved with it. And then outbreak assistance, which is a major uh, part of what we do, as well as working with uh, intel agencies and others on the law enforcement side on uh, criminal investigations that connect uh, with these events as well. Um, you know, rapid detection is obviously key and having firewalls is key both to the bio side and the cyber side. Um, there are a lot of components involved in, in a lot of uh, points where detractors of the United States or others who want to do harm or, or seek an economic benefit uh, could all, you know, uh, to look at and to target. And that, that makes it all the more important for conversations like we're ha having today uh, to get smart people uh, thinking about this, to use their imagination, uh, to connect uh, both agencies, private sector and academia uh, all together to, to think of ways that we can uh, do better, harden our systems and, and be prepared. Um, we have surveillance plans in place. I'm gonna talk about swine fever uh, in a little bit, in a little bit better detail, uh, but all of this is critical with state and federal partners all, all working together. Um, the National Biodefense Strategy. So it, it really focuses on whether our nation is prepared for, for uh, deliberate biological threats. And I would uh, connect cyber up with that as well. Um, this plan is, is reviewed and updated from time to time. And the current one uh, expires in 2023. Uh, so as we put a lot of thought into updates to the Biodefense Strategy, I would really welcome and be very interested in working with folks who are participating in this symposium uh, to understand your views, especially on the cyber overlay of uh, what updates might look like and do some, some sort of brainstorming and, and put some thinking into uh, how we could uh, better overlay cyber with the overall uh, biodefense strategy. In the, in the name of updating things, this is a photo of Plum Island uh, located off the, the east coast of New York. It's been our, our primary location for uh, doing animal disease testing and research since 1954. Uh, it used to be a Department of Defense facility. Um, it has, I would say, outlived its design, original design capacity, and based upon authorization of Congress, we'll be uh, closing down Palm Island in the coming year and trans transition transitioning our efforts uh, to Manhattan, Kansas, 
uh, to the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility or NBAF. Uh, so construction began in 2011. It's a, over a one and a quarter billion dollar uh, facility. Um, and a major component of this is making sure that the, the cyber pieces, the, uh, the data management, uh, our ability to do secure communications is integrally involved into NBAF. And I obviously can't go into a whole lot of detail, but it just shows the types of investment in serious uh, nature that our congressional authorizers and agriculture and, and executive branch leadership uh, place into, into cyber and biodefense as the need to, to make sure that we've got the appropriate uh, facilities and, and capabilities uh, to match the, the circumstances. African swine fever, we've not had in the Western hemisphere uh, since the, the 70s. Uh, uh, and it, we recently, just this summer, uh, had positive tests come back from the Dominican Republic. This is a major issue uh, facing agriculture. Uh, African swine fever is incredibly uh, lethal to, uh, to, to uh, swine population and um, could really make a major impact to the US economy if it were to make its way uh, from Hispaniola to America. Uh, and just for a sort of scope and, and to give you a feel for what this means, if we had a positive detection of ASF in the US, um, it would take over $80 billion in probably five years to eradicate uh, swine fever from the US. So this is a, just a quick map from a week ago to show you sort of the positive detections in hot spots in the Dominican Republic. Um, we have every reason to believe that there's quite a few more dots on the left side of that uh, screen in the Haiti side uh, with the porous border that we've got there. Uh, a little bit more limited intel in terms of the detections on, on Haiti, but we're uh, doing certainly a lot more of that, and I'll get into the specifics there. Um, it takes about 11 days for uh, uh, swine to show symptoms of ASF. So just to, as we're thinking a lot about that on the human side on COVID, uh, clearly there, there can be a lot of spread before a farmer would ever be alerted to the presence of, uh, of ASF. Uh, Secretary Vilsack this week at, at CSU announced that we were you, we are going to be using $500 million of uh, commodity credit corporation funding. This is a, a pot of uh, dollars that is used to uh, protect American agriculture from, from threats. Uh, for ramped up detection um, and eradication of, of, Ameri of African swine fever uh, down in, in Hispaniola. So this is a historic level investment it shows how serious USDA is taking uh, the situation, not just to work on containment strategies and setting up zones of protection, but to actually proactively uh, work on, on more rapid uh, uh, detection and uh, with the cooperation of local authorities, work on, on depopulation of, of swine uh, where it's appropriate. But uh, this is a, a major threat. I don't want to leave you with any other impression than that. And again, just to, on a multi uh, level front, it's the type of thing that we have to be uh, vigilant about. Um, skipping past ASF real quick, I just want to talk about COVID. Uh, uh, beyond the 500 million that I mentioned, our secretary announced this week, Congress appropriated 300 million dollars this year for uh, advanced surveillance on on SARS uh, uh, COVID uh, for zoonotic purposes. Because again, we know that uh, these uh, diseases uh, can can move uh, back and forth between. Uh, human and animal population. So uh, we're aggressively working on the planning for implementing that uh, uh, with a focus on prevention, detection, uh, control of spread of the disease. And there's certainly a lot of communication and outreach that needs to be done uh, uh, to communities to, to understand uh, the vital nature of this. Um, beyond the, the initial plan for it, we have uh, held some listening sessions and roundtables on implementation of the dollars. And we're currently accepting public comments through October 8th on, uh, on implementation of these, uh, these monies. So I would really encourage folks, if you haven't already uh, gotten involved and you have uh, overlays at work on, on biodefense, uh, clearly data management and uh, trying to use uh, uh, data analysis to better uh, uh, model and, and utilize the data that we have coming in from the surveillance side. Is, is key. So many folks participating in this symposium uh, may have useful and, and valuable thoughts for us. So we would encourage uh, folks to give us uh, uh, input by October 8th on that strategy. It really all comes down to One Health, um, and that's a major emphasis of, of the executive branch, this administration, that animal disease, human disease, and things happening in the environment 
are all overlaid. I would expand this uh, uh, diagram to put a big circle of cyber around the entire thing, uh, because clearly in, in one way or another, uh, what's happening in cyber, either through all of the data that we have um, uh, control over and, and within the domain, needs to be protected. There's a lot of uh, ways, as Ed, you talked about, where uh, uh, we need to, to be making sure that we are uh, tightening up our operational security um, that we are smart about uh, being tight on uh, on all of the information that's uh, being stored on on our, our servers and work very closely with the private sector to help them uh, recognize the threats that are out there and hopefully uh, get them to make investments on hardening their own defenses as well to make them better uh, resilient to these types of, of attacks uh, that we have seen over the summer of 2021. So uh, that's really, I think, the, the key thing that I wanted to, to get across. And, and I'd be looking forward to questions that folks may have. Because of the issue is biodefense, I'll inoculate myself a bit just by saying, while I'm working uh, on helping to coordinate and to provide uh, leadership for uh, the department across agencies on this topic, um, you know, if, if we want to get into discussions on PCR testing or blockchain or how we manage our data warehouses, I'm probably not the person to talk to on this particular conversation. So again, I want to inoculate myself from those uh, <laughs> those types of details. But uh, again, happy to make contact with all of you and to establish good lines of communication. Um, and I look forward to the, the conversation. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Rudolph, for hosting this it's a very important topic. Thanks, Doug. And I certainly appreciate the use of the word inoculation in the COVID era. So uh, it's a reminder of everybody's to get vaccinated as well. Um, I really appreciate all the uh, presentations.